press the bell icon and never miss an update from ET Auto. Hello and welcome to ET Auto. I'm sitting with Mr. Han Oliver Roll, who is Chief Technology Officer of Bosch India. Bosch is world largest component manufacturer and they are very high on technology. <coughs> and somebody who is taking care of the technology, we have the privilege to have him here. Welcome to ET Auto. Uh, talking me. about automotive industry, right now we are at the cusp of mega shift when it comes to technology. What are the key mega trends that you notice that India can adopt going forward in automotive space? Mm. That's a very good question and uh, I just can confirm that um, we also consider it for India that we are at an inflection point for the automotive industry. And I can tell you it has never been more challenging but also more fun to work in that specific industry. And there is a nice acronym out uh, that is describing this very much, though so that's the case that is connected, automated, um, electrified, and uh, driving. Yeah? So, and that is very much true as well for uh, India. We are talking about connected vehicle and electrification. We'll talk okay. about electrification in the latter part. Uh, what are the challenges in terms of connected vehicle? Because we see a lot of reports coming up, uh, the huge hacking and other challenges. How can we, you know, deal with those kind of uh, uh, problem that we may face as we move more towards, uh, you know, uh, bringing more digital element in connected and software in automotive? Because we see some of the vehicles have large number of codings, like for the one of the force one vehicle has lacks of lines of coding. So how do we uh, safeguard from any uh, hacking or other problem that could occur? So of course, let's say security aspect in that regard is playing a major role. And um, we have to come up here with solutions that should, to my mind, not be uh, limited to a single market, market but uh, being standardized. Yeah? So that is being applied then across the automotive world to the best extent possible. Individual solutions uh, will most probably not make it. Yeah? Specifically as um, open source kind of coding is uh, getting more and more uh, prominent also in our business, uh, we have to have uh, security standards that are adoptable worldwide. So we need to have a security standard in India as well. Uh, we have seen that the connected high-end electronics are being mostly used in upper luxury brands like BMW, Audi and Mercedes. Uh, is Bosch looking at a low-cost uh, formula when we can have these kind of gadgets and instruments in a mass segment vehicle? Uh, how far are we? What percentage of vehicle do you see that they, you will have higher number of el electronics coming up? Now look, uh, you always have these two opportunities to say you come top down from the value chain or you come bottom up yeah, and um, let's say realize right from the start some economies of scale. Uh, the more important question is what is actually the market requirement and what is the customer also willing to, to pay for. I make an example, it, makes, uh, it made to, uh, for example very much sense also in the past to install rear-view cameras as soon as possible, also in the small segment. Yeah? Because in Germany, if you take this as a market, uh, when you are driving with your car, and it's not the case that everybody has a driver, yeah, so you have to park your vehicle. Yeah? And automated parking also in that time is not yet available. But a rear view camera makes a lot of sense and it's just a simple aid also in small vehicles. So it seems to be a nice gadget with a lot of uh, safety inside and hence makes sense to bring this right away in small vehicles as well, which happened by the way as well. Oh, what is the global average, you know, uh, contribution of electronics in uh, cars per unit? And okay. what is current in India on an average and where do you see the market progressing? So electronics is the need of the hour. Yeah? And I start with what is happening with the BS6 introduction in April 2020 when, uh, and also already with uh, um, BS4 introduction, when um, the uh, conventional mechanical fuel injection equipment were coming to an end. So electrification is happening across the vehicle landscape 
And the question is more how we can balance that out now that we do not have individual spots, let's say in the body, the engine um, compartment, where we have uh, control units to take care of, but how to higher integrate this in an EE architecture. So uh, I just wanted to understand how the markets for electronic item is going to increase in automotive space. Like, uh, suppose a car costs hundred dollar. So how, m like ten dollar? What is the current uh, share of electronics in car, and how do you look at it going forward? Because there is a strong thrust, uh, as you mentioned. Honestly spoken, uh, I cannot give you a number here. Yeah. But the time of mechanical products alone, this is, uh, let's say, is still over. Our clear intent is to make um, the automotive world smart, digital, and connected. And that is only going if these components are uh, electric components. So uh, as we are progressing toward BS6, we are already set to skip uh, the BS5. So what kind of complication, what kind of uh, problem you think the component makers or the industry can face apart from the huge investment that is uh, it is going to take. Do you think we are ready to cope up with this kind of jump? I think um, that it was a very good move from the Indian um, policy makers to skip now BS5 and catch up right away with Euro 6 like emissions. It's a good reality that is being created and it will help tremendously to improve the air quality coming out from, uh, from cars. Uh, having said that, it's of, course, it's of course a big step to take and it will require here a very strong collaboration with uh, tier one suppliers like us being system solution providers, fuel injection equipment until the after treatment system, complete system integration together with uh, the vehicle manufacturer who is mostly also the engine manufacturer and it requires also here with regards to air path and so on a lot of things to be adapted and that can only be done in a very close links collaboration. We are moving toward BS6 and electrification uh, that uh, creates a huge opportunity for Bosch and other companies. How Bosch is planning, what is your investment plan, how do you want to ramp up or expand your capacity here in India? Yeah. So first let me say that, uh, and that is uh, globally valid, the uh, internal combustion engine fueled with diesel, gasoline, CNG, uh, or um, also, uh, let's say, ethanol, for example, will have a very long lasting time still. And it's very much worthwhile to invest in any kind of efficiency improvement in uh, these engines. Yeah? Um, while we think that uh, by uh, mid of um, uh, 20, uh, uh, the 20s, um, we will be seeing a double digit share of uh, also purely electrified vehicles across the world. And India will play a role in that as well. That was, by the way, one of the reasons why we announced last year and uh, we enforced this announcement just yesterday that we as the Bosch Limited will be taking care um, for that market here in India. So uh, talking about electric vehicle, we, uh, the government is pushing for complete electrification by 2030. Even France says 2040. Uh, entire world is uh, uh, moving toward electrification. Do you think electrification is the only final answer or do you think there are other alternate fuel that would have been explored? It's a very good question. I don't think that by just setting up a timeline you can overcome technical challenges that are different in uh, the markets uh, be or even uh, comparing urbanized areas towards, uh, towards rural areas. So the technical challenges are still there and they have to be overcome and at the end it has to be economically viable uh, so that the take rates and the market response is as positive as it is being needed to uh, let's say compensate the big invest to be taken by the whole ecosystem, so it's not only limited to the automotive suppliers or uh, to the OEM. Yeah? So alternative solutions beyond, let's say, just focusing on diesel or gasoline uh, fueled cars or CNG or others, is to think about what is really needed. And the need of the hour is that we look on what is happening with our world and the CO2 uh, emission being created 
and uh, which is only currently knowing one direction going upwards. Bosch has huge business interest in IC engine and uh, we are talking about electrification. Uh, do you feel some kind of threat uh, to your business <laughs> or do you think you will be uh, IC engine is going to stay there? No, I, we, are, we are absolutely here um, not, uh, not afraid. Uh, the opposite is true. Uh, we are well positioned for the electrified market and we just have behind this wall, if you will, uh, a demo vehicle that uh, we will showcase also on uh, the Auto Expo starting then uh, tomorrow uh, and where you can experience uh, this uh, feeling of a purely electrified vehicle with only uh, Bosch system solution. So we have other options also like fuel cell and all. Uh, why uh, Bosch as a company, you are a global leader, you have a lot of influence in the automotive market. Entire world is talking about electrification. Uh, do you think Bosch should have taken some measures, some strong steps uh, to make them understand that the other uh, fuel alternate options are available which the industry can explore? Ultimately, we have to reduce the pollution. That's what the, uh, because uh, here we'll have too much of reliance on lithium, cobalt. So that is also a resource that is limited, you know. If we talk about sustainable <coughs> mobility, are we really heading towards a sustainable mobility just by focusing on electric vehicles? Uh, there's no doubt that electrified vehicles, be it purely electrified vehicles, be it fuel cell vehicles, be it even hybrid vehicles, they will come in the market and they will have a growing share of the market. And we as Bosch, we are well positioned. Your question is leading me more to a thought about um, what to do to make it as CO2 neutral in future and emission free and by the way emission free is one of our visions that we have if we speak about mobility and there of course there's something very interesting uh, being discussed and we are as Bosch also part of this discussion with technical advice and that is electric fuels or synthetic fuels where you create out of uh, electrolysis and uh, CO2 a fuel be it gaseous or liquid at the end for an existing uh, combustion engine. We have seen that there's a lot of uh, technology change happening. We have got AMT automated manual transmission which has <coughs> set a very good market in India. Uh, unfortunately, Bosch was <laughs> not the one to introduce this, other company introduced. Uh, Bosch as a technology leader, what are the uh, new technology that you are planning to introduce that could uh, you know, shift the market trend here in India? So with regards to our vision, which is emission-free, accident-free and stress-free driving, of course any kind of automation is part of our thought process and our future product portfolio. Yeah? Be it now an AMT or be it any kind of other uh, little helper um, in uh, city situ uh, driving situations like uh, Bangalore deep city driving where um, shifting the gear isn't anything but comfort. So comfort plays a big role in having a stress-free driving and uh, we will also be part in, uh, in that. What level of automation you think uh, we can adopt and where, which segment we can start from, you think, in India if we move towards autonomous vehicles? So let's say um, automation uh, already started uh, also in India with uh, the offerings that we're having outside. Yeah? You don't have to think right away uh, of robot taxis um, here in the Indian market, but do it gradually, step by step, and um, let's say creating also an experience for the customer of what is useful for the market and what is less useful for the market. And uh, there India just has some different requirements than uh, other areas of the world, of course. You source a lot of component from tier 3, tier 2 suppliers in India. Uh, when you shortlist uh, <coughs> supplier from technology point of view, what are the three key criteria for them to look out for? Because there are a lot of reader who belongs to this uh, community and they want to supply to companies like Bosch. Sure. Let's say whenever we are discussing localization and that is, let's say, the the baseline for starting such kind of a discussion with uh, future suppliers. We are looking on uh, suppliers 
that can help to pave the way making products here viable and that is of course technically and economically spoken. Yeah? So we need partners here for uh, developing our products and make out of these products and system solutions. So the need of the hour is um, of course to gain pace in the upcoming and more and more challenging uh, requirements which again are a lot of fun to work in. Thank you so much Mr. Thank Rolf you. for talking Thank to you. Thank you.